All right, guys, we're back home after what was a crazy UFC 285 week. I got to sit with Bo Nickel, Cyril Gaon, uh actually spoke to John Jones on the cell phone, watched him become the heavyweight champion of the world in tremendous fashion. But when you're as big a deal to a sport as Jones is, people want to turn the page. And obviously they turned the page to Stipe Miocic. I was able to sit with Stipe and do a check-in with him last weekend. But him and I both felt that if we didn't sit for a few minutes and look back on what our rivalry was, uh, it would be a real disservice to you guys. If you guys know, Steve and I were friends before uh, fight number one. And our friendship, uh, while it may not be exactly the same today as it was prior to the fights, it is much uh, better to not be worried about getting punched by Stipe Miocic anymore. So we sat before him and I did DraftKings together. We talked about the fights. We talked about fight one, fight two, fight three. It, it literally only took about seven, eight minutes. It wasn't long. It was just to sit, look back on the emotions that went into the fight, uh, talk about what I was thinking in the fight, what he was thinking in the fight. And it was very interesting the way that fight two played out with him winning the fights to the body at the end and what he thought in those moments. Because it wasn't as much of an on-the-spot adjustment as many think uh, with Stipe going to the body as he did in round number four. He uh, he spoke about that and and much more over the course of the second part of our conversation. Uh, I, tremendous, I have tremendous respect for Miocic. I have tremendous respect for what Jones did last week and also. Now these guys are scheduled to fight. But before Stipe starts what could potentially be another big-time rivalry in his career, he took an opportunity to look back on ours last week from Las Vegas. And I took a lot from it, too. It was a great conversation. So check it out. All right, guys. I'm here with Stipe Miocic, greatest heavyweight fighter of all time in the UFC history. Stipe, thanks for checking in with me, man. I appreciate it. I want to talk to my man about, I saw you in Columbus last year. And for the first time I saw you, I looked out the octagon, and I didn't want to punch you in the face. I was very happy about that. You're blowing me kisses and shit. I was like, oh, my God, this is our relationship. <laughs> because for three fucking years, it became, God, this guy's going to punch me. I'm going to punch him. It, was a, it really was a nightmare looking back on it, if I'm being honest with you. It was terrible. It was terrible. I, don't, I mean, I still remember when you hit me the last, first time. I was like, <laughs> I was like, fuck. What the fuck happened to me? You know what was crazy? Because, like, we had such a great relationship going into mm -hmm. the first thing. And we fought in Boston. And then right away, Dana's like, do you want to fight for the heavyweight championship? And I was like, sure. And then I remember we spoke on the phone. You remember we had a phone call yeah. before the first fight even happened? We're like, listen, let's do this, but let's try to get paid. Yeah. Right? 100%. 100%. It was that. It was was that, was that before the Ultimate Fighter, right? Yeah, right before the Ultimate Fighter. Was it was like, let's get paid. I remember I was sitting in my kitchen at a, at a table. And I remember the whole, the whole thing. Right? That's crazy. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I do remember I called you, I texted you, and then we called and talked on the phone a little yeah. bit. Like, yeah, let's do this. Let's get money, though. Make it right, yeah. It was good, though. We yeah, made some right. money. We did. Right? We did make some money. Yeah, yeah. So, But um, let me ask you this. Over the course of the whole thing, mm -hmm. at what point did you start to dislike me? I never disliked you. I was just really upset for some of the things you were saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? It's just like, a good, like when you're a good friend. You're like, yeah. why the fuck would you say that, dude? I was I'm just sorry, trying I to sell fights. It's okay, you me. could say Yeah, you're you know, fine. I'm like, why the fuck would you say that? Like, I, I was, was trying to sell fights. I get it. I know. But you know me. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's when. You know, like, I was like, why would you say that? And then like, and then all of a sudden, then I'm like, I got it. It, just, it becomes I annoying. Being, I was being sensitive about it. Well, one know? of the things about me, and you know that from The Ultimate Fighter, I can become a bit annoying. I'm a grinder. And that's what I'm going to do to Stipe on Saturday. When you make an adjustment like you guys did last time, you get to do that one time. Because I go home and I fix that. And I work and I work diligently to try to ensure that it doesn't happen again. He's not being coy. You can tell he always smirks when he tries to say he's not going to do it. Look at him. He can't even help himself. Look, he's doing it right now. He's going to try to smirk right away as soon as you talk about the body shots. And so I was just trying to annoy you because at first, I, initially, I was really kind of afraid. So I was like, if I just annoy him... Yeah. You know, well, I, mean, well, I felt the same way. I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, "He's fucking good." Like, I'm like, "He's a great wrestler. He fucking knows how to throw. He doesn't stop." I'm like, 
It's gonna be a fucking fight. Like, it was I, fucking I, crazy. No, was it? Fuck no, it was not fucking great. It was terrible. No, it was crazy. Like because <laughs> we fought that first fight yeah. in Vegas. I won the first fight. Second fight in Anaheim. Dude, you started hitting me in the stomach. Like I, I, I didn't do something because I was fucking fighting like shit. I could not first two rounds, it. I was like, "What am I doing?" I, I couldn't believe it. And I was like, "It worked out. Thank God." You know, thank God. Dude, it dude out. you started throwing those shots to the body, and I recall even in the first in the first fights, like when you would hit me, I was like, "God, this guy hits a little bit different than what I was used to." Even when I fought at heavyweight prior, mm-hmm. those guys hit hard. Yeah. But it was different because you were faster. Yeah. So you could get to the target faster, and it was like. Champ, you hit harder because you were faster than most heavyweights. When did you start to feel like, man, my power is just a little different? When you were faster than me and I couldn't hit you, so I had to figure something out. <laughs> Dude, I you always play. hit me. Well, I, I, now you hit me way more than you. <laughs> but I, I really, you know, I just really just, I was like, you know what, I got I to change it up. And I remember in that fight, I think it was the second round, I caught you the one time in the body and you winced. Yeah. And I didn't, I usually get a smelling blood just like you. Yeah. I just I just didn't see it. I'm like, because I, I don't know who you are and like, even though like I, I've winced too, and like you still know how to recover, so I'm, yeah. like, I'm not gonna just jump in and keep you know, going, blow my load. Next, you know, I'm I'm struggling. So, and then you know that fourth round came, and I you know I hit you. And I was like, okay, let's see what happens. It's actually yeah. landing over and over. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm just going. Then I started changing up, going up top, and then kick to the body shot. I just throw throwing whatever I could at you just to, to get to the body. But you know what the problem? The difference is this, though, right? And I thought this is what where I give you some massive credit. It's always I was always good at not getting that shot that could get you out. Yeah. Right. So even though you was getting me to the body, I was always good at rolling the next one mm-hmm. because that's the one that gets you. Yeah. It's not the one that hurts you initially. It's yeah. that other one. Yep. But then you went, boom. And when I did it that last time, I you s- came over yeah, the top. I, 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 yes. I you spun it and went to the other one. Yep. And that was the one that made me go, whoa, oh, because yeah. those are the ones that get you. Right. It's not yeah. that first one. Yep. Because mm-hmm. even in the first fight when we were fighting. It was like a combination break and then another one. It's yeah. never the, the one that hits you the first time. Yeah, yeah. I pray it always it never happens. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, it's like a it's like a weird it's like a weird dynamic. But like like we spoke about, we made a lot of money, we made some history, yep. right? One of the best trilogies. But the last fight in the Apex. When you look back on it, are you a little I'm kinda of bitter about that. We fought in front of twenty thousand both times oh, no, and then to fight awkward. the Apex. Yeah. It wasn't good. It, it was like awkward because like you know, we're funny. You hit me, I hit you, and you're boom. And you like literally hear the echoing of the punch. It was yeah. like, this is so weird. And then, like, I hear your coach, I hear my coach. I'm like, this is, it's like we're sparring. Yeah, it was, it was all, but it was kind of crazy because it, I felt like it didn't do justice to what the rivalry was. I know. It kind of sucked. And we were right in the middle of the pandemic. And then, it's not like COVID, we were like yeah. in the beginning, like at the end where there were 200 people yeah. in there. It would have just, it just felt like it, it didn't feel right for something as important as it was. Yeah. To end in the way that it did, like, and I always look back on that. Like, I, it's my last fight. Yeah. At least you have the opportunity to go fight again. Yeah. Right, and experience the crowd again. Yeah, I, I love the crowd. Like, that's what I think. That's what what makes a fight. Like, I don't get pumped up, but just just even if they hate me, I could still just to walk out. And just, yeah. just, it's just I tell people like, it's a different feeling. I remember when in Columbus, I brought my wife's cousin. We were all with his wife, and they all came and we walked out of the tunnel, and he was like. Dude. He's like, I, I want to fight. I'm like, Sean, no, you, you don't, don't want to fight. <laughs> no, trust me. He's like, no, bro, I get it now. Like, this is amazing. I'm like, yeah, you get it. It's just bro. that, just people against you or they're with you, but it's just that feeling. Just I get goosebumps thinking about that it. Man. It's, just, just, it's crazy. Like Cleveland, like that was like, I, I, oh I, my god, I, that was crazy. I, I bawled my balls, my eyes out when I watched that video the next day. How 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 much do you miss it now? Right, because it's been a while since yeah. you've been in there. Well, I, I definitely do miss it. I think I love the fans. Like I said, the fans, the fans is what makes the sport, and I think. Uh, you know, I'll be seeing what you think. I think uh, I I want to tell you, man, I appreciate you for the rivalry. I appreciate you for the friendship before and afterwards. And, you know, I, I've had some a lot of rematches and instances with people. But this is the one that I appreciate the most. Come because of the man that come you are. Come my man. My man. Hey, Stipe. Thank yeah. you for checking in. Pleasure. We'll be broad. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Oh, thank you, buddy.